What is up and welcome to Three in the Key. I am your host, Abby Walsh. I decided to step in front of the camera today to give you all a break for Ben. Unfortunately for the rest of us, we still have to deal with him during our debate and he insisted on it being our guest interview. But before we get to him, let me catch you up to date on what you missed. After it being announced that Adrian Peterson would not be returning to the NFL this season, Peterson has made a statement saying that he won't ever use a switch again. Peterson is remorseful for having injured his four-year-old son while punishing him using a switch. Peterson will be out for at least the remainder of the season after he entered a no-contest plea to reckless assault of a child. Peterson said, quote, I take full responsibility for my actions. I regret the situation. I love my son more than any one of you could even imagine, end quote. The winless streak has finally come to an end. The Oakland Raiders, after dropping 16 straight games over the span of two seasons, were able to knock off the streaking Kansas City Chiefs last night, 24 to 20. The 7-3 Chiefs fell behind two touchdowns until Alex Smith led the team to tie the game back up, but the efforts were unfortunately not enough. The Chiefs fall to 7-4 on the season after the loss to the league's worst team, while the Raiders were finally able to add one to the win column. In case you've missed it, Bus Buffalo has received a lot of snow this week. With places reporting over six feet of snow, the NFL has been in a sticky situation this week trying to decide what to do about the Bills' home game. The league has now decided that the game will be played in the Motor City. The Sunday afternoon start has been moved to Monday night in Ford Field to accommodate for the two teams. The Bills had previously offered fans $10 an hour plus free tickets to the game if they cleared snow at Ralph Wilson Stadium. It proved to be an illogical task to have 70,000 plus fans driving to the stadium, so the decision was made to move the game. Now it's time for Abby's Fantasy Tip of the Week. Make sure you check your free agents this week as Josh Gordon of the Cleveland Browns will make his season debut on Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. Gordon has been suspended for violating the league's drug policy after being one of the elite receivers for fantasy this past season. With this addition, also look to see the stock rise for Browns quarterback Brian Hoyer. That has been my tip of the week and also what you missed. When we return, I will sit down with the most amazing sports host ever, Ben Allen. We'll be right back. And now we welcome our favorite host, Ben Allen. Ben, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Well, it was, you know, it was real short notice, but <laughs> I, you know, I was able to clear out a little time, so I'm glad I could be here for you guys. I am too. In case you don't know, I'm Ben's director, so I've spent a lot of time behind the scenes of Three in the Key. Um, but I guess I wanted to start this interview with saying, or asking you, what made you decide to start a sports talk show? I've told the story to a lot of people. It was kind of weird how everything happened. I, as my freshman year, I had the opportunity to host uh, Jayhawk Sports Report down at the KUJH studio. And after my freshman year, I got the opportunity to work out in Universal Sports Network out in Denver. And it was really funny. I like to think I have all these weird epiphanies. And I actually walked out of church one day on a Sunday. And it, not a Tuesday, but on a Sunday. And it popped up one day. I was just like, you know what? I should host a sports show that's going to be a little bit different than just your average thing. I want to have debate in it. And the idea popped up that I would do this show. And ultimately, this is what's become of it. And unfortunately, I have these people around me all the time that drive me crazy, obviously. But, you know, it's a good show. We've been doing the show for almost a year now. We've made a lot of pretty big changes from the very beginning. What would you say your favorite change or the biggest progression that has been made so far? Besides putting you on air today so I don't yeah, have to have you direct? That's the biggest mistake. That was the biggest mistake. <laughs> um, I think my favorite change that we've probably made is I really like the new set. I like this virtual set with the color, you know. The bar was fun, but you know, I had to make it a little bit more professional because I know I had the dean and everyone else watching. So I decided to bring it up a little bit, a little bit, you know, a couple notches to make it a little bit more professional. I like the changes with it. I love that we added the debate. Yes. That was something that was really big. At first we didn't have the debate, and when that came around, when we had Mike Vernon and Blake Schuster on, it was just this classic. really fun, it was a classic debate, and it was really fun with the white t-shirt and everything. Right. So. Would that be your favorite debate moment? That's or? that's probably my favorite debate moment was because it was the first debate. We didn't really know what to expect, but we had these two people going at each other and then we had Jeffrey Calvert on the middle part. You know, he's right in this guy, just, just stuck in the middle between these two guys just going crazy. And it was that was probably my favorite debate moment. So and now that we're coming to the end of the semester, what can we say is going to happen to three in the key in the future? 
Well, I have to unfortunately say this will be the second to last episode that we will have of Three in the Key. You're breaking a the viewers' hearts A little bit of a, right break, a break here for a second. Um, actually, one of our guests that we have on today, Mr. Uh, Blake McFarland and I, have decided we're going to team up and do our own sports show together next semester. Mm -hmm. We're not sure in what capacity that will be, but make sure you're looking out for that. But this, unfortunately, will be the second to last episode of Three in the Key. So. Well, you're breaking all of our hearts. I have to assume that because I am the best director you could possibly ask for that I will be asked back. Danny, Danny, <laughs> can you hear me? Hello. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's that's who we're gonna go with—the one who's directing today, actually. All right. Well, so. we'll have to duke it out after the show. <laughs> if you don't take my job as the host. Exactly. I'm doing I'm doing a pretty good job you right now. You are doing quite well. Good no, job. I'm completely winging it. <laughs> but I do have one more thing to say. Mm -hmm. What's this that? is from our favorite and one of our favorite fans, um, Hank Cavanero. He says, Ben, what makes you believe that you are indeed taller than five foot six? Oh, of course. I somehow knew this was gonna gonna pop up today. It, just for the record, I'm actually listed on my driver's license as five ten. Anyone who uh, whoever, <laughs> I'm 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 five ten with you know with my helmet on and my cleats and yeah. I'm that's always what I push for. I always push the, the athletics the hair, here. With right? it. Yeah, with the gel in the hair, it adds a little go. bit there. I'm about that. But no, I'm actually not five six for anyone who's curious. I'm sure. Brett is probably standing in the newsroom right now, yep. so much there yelling that you know I'm I'm probably five six, but in all actuality, I'm actually listed at five eight. I'm actually five eight. Five six, five eight. We love him no matter what it is. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us and sitting down, and thank you for giving me the opportunity well, to be your director and course, steal Abby. a spotlight we, we for a hot loved, second today. We have loved to have you. It's all been a the blast. Time, so. It has. Well, please join us for after the break when we return with the debate. Thanks and see you soon. Welcome back to Three in the Key. It is time for our debate. Joining us today are some fan favorites. We have back Blake McFarland, our aforementioned Ben Allen, and Shane Jackson. Guys, are we doing? Are we ready today? Oh well, I've been born ready for this. I know you have. Calm born down. ready. Calm down. Fan, born fan, ready. fan favorite was closer to my name than any of your guys' names. And there's a reason for well, that. Well, I haven't been on yet. This is my debut. I, I don't. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I am not good. Let's do it. All right, guys. Let's get started with our first question. With the victory against. Iowa in a competitive game versus TCU, has Clint Bowen secured his spot as the new Jayhawks head coach? And if you don't think he is the new head coach, who should be and why? Well, I'll start this one off. I've been waiting, I've been waiting a while to start this one off. I've got three words for you guys here. The University of Florida. That's four words. <laughs> so that's mind twisting you guys now already. University of Florida, three words, the four. University of Florida is going to be the biggest reason why KU is not able to secure a big name. University of Florida just lost Moss Champ. They're going to have any selection of any offensive coordinator or anyone that they absolutely want, which is all the jobs that we wanted from KU to get. We wanted them to get Frost. We wanted them to get somebody from anywhere else that has an offensive prowess. That's not going to happen now with this. But I also think at the same time, I think that Bowen has kind of proved to himself that he is the coach of this team. They've had five straight games with over 200 plus yards passing. That hasn't happened since 2011 when they only had back to back doing that. Now they've changed the entire dynamic of this team, always been a run team. They're 76 in the country, which I know is low, but that's 76 in the country and actually passing now. They're a better passing team than they are a rushing team now. So Ben, I actually do have three words for you why Clint Bowen will get this job. Mm -hmm. He's a Jayhawk and there's no pot in there to make it three. Yep. That's the main reason. This guy, he is a Jayhawk born and through. He is, he's from Lawrence. He's gonna live in Lawrence. He's gonna die in Lawrence. It's just like Roy Williams saying when he decided to go to North Carolina, he was born at Tar Heel. He lived at Tar Heel, now he's gonna die at Tar Heel. does that make you a good coach? Here's how it makes him a good coach. Interim coaches a lot of times, they do very well for one season because they take a team, they can rally around the interim coach, and they play really well, but they, do the ex they don't change quarterbacks, they don't change coordinators, they don't change anything. They pretty much just do the same thing, and they just are a little bit more motivated because all of them really is that realizing that they basically cost one guy's job. With Clint Bowen, he has really taken over the program and shown you what he could do when he runs it. Eric Kissall to be the offensive coordinator was a huge move. That's a guy that should be at USC, but because of different reasons, is at Kansas now. Also, Michael Cummings, who a guy who nobody thought was going to be the starting quarterback ever at Kansas, is now a starting quarterback that you look towards the next year as being a pretty good quarterback in the Big 12. Fair they enough. also brought in Nigel King. The defense is the same, but the whole program is all, it's just completely different. He hasn't, it's not status quo anymore with him. He's changed everything. He's a Jayhawk. I don't see why you, why you wouldn't give him a chance because Jim Harbaugh's not coming to Kansas and nobody else is, and I don't think the Florida job has anything to do with it. You don't think that you don't I think don't, the opening at the biggest school. In the I don't. I don't think KU goes after the same candidates as them. And there's there was always going to be that job. Yeah. There's always going to be another school that's a more, a more I guess, 
awesome place to go to than Kansas. But that's just how we are right now. As much so as what do you I think of this question? What do you think of this question? I, as much as I hate to agree job. with Ben, I'm going to have to agree. I think Clint Bowen does deserve this job, mainly because the offense really came alive. I remember a couple months ago when you had me on as an interview, I said I was a little weary of Clint Bowen being the head coach because of his offensive knowledge. I didn't think he had enough offensive knowledge. But Eric Keesaw being promoted to co-offensive coordinator, this offense has came alive. No, he's not co-offensive coordinator. He's the man. I mean, he, he's calling the, the shots. Day, not to step in, Charles, let you yeah. for a second. But a head coach really on the, at the end of the day doesn't really need to know offense or defense that much. He mm -hmm. needs to be a CEO of a football team and just be able to let people do their job. He's letting Eric Kessler do his job, and Clint Bowen's doing his job as defensive coordinator. And as much as it's been stated, I think it hasn't been stated enough, Bowen does bring spirit to this Kansas football program. He's bringing it, making it fun once again. I mean, you saw them take number, TC, number four TCU to the wire. I mean, this team is really coming ready to play and for Bowen, and it's because of what Blake said. He is a Jayhawk. They really want to play for him. I mean, all these players are saying how they really want to be the coach next year. All right, guys, I'm going to step in. I have three, no, four words for you. Blake Allen, or Blake, oh, that's not even your name. Blake wins the point. <laughs> for his Blake Allen, <laughs> I think, a half a point? I, just, I felt yeah, bad for Ben. Ooh. No half point for Ben. No half point for me, okay. All well, right, so the, the football guy gets the first point. Staying along with football, Mississippi State fell to spot number four after losing to Bama. Bama went from spot five to one keeping Florida State an undefeated team in spot number three. This generated a lot of complaints about the subjectivity of, playoff, of the playoff committee's weekly ranking. I want to know if you guys think that this top four is the correct one, and what do you think about the committee's decision-making process? Well, people are always going to find a way to complain about the playoffs, you know, whatever four teams are in the playoff situation. But I think this, these four teams are who should be in it right now. Mississippi State has played three top ten teams and came away with a victory. Their only loss is against now number one Alabama on the road. It was only a five-point loss. I think these four teams deserve to play. Oregon's only loss is when they had injuries at the offensive line. They clearly deserve to be there. Florida State, although they are undefeated, I don't, they haven't played their best football just yet. I, the only thing I'm really complaining about is I don't want to see an SEC matchup in the first round. If these two win in the first round and meet up in the national championship game, I'm all for that. But don't match up Mississippi State and Alabama in the first round. Let Mississippi State play in Oregon or Florida State. I would say that it's uh, right now this is fine, but this will not be the four at the end of mm -hmm. the season, so I'm not too worried about it. I think people overvalue the, these rankings. I really honestly God, I think that they shouldn't even say the rankings until the end of the year because all it does is it just allows people to complain and get upset. It allows people like TCU to sit there and complain, but they're really not that good of a team. It allows Baylor to complain. It allows Auburn to complain. It allows all these teams. All they're going to do is just complain about how they're not in the Final Four right now. It would be like if throughout the college basketball season, the selection committee just put out their number one seeds every week. Like, you know, there'd, be, there'd be a point in time of the year where KU fans just like, we're number one in the Big 12 and, you know, 22 and one right now. Why aren't we a number one seed? And that's all it is. It's just people complaining. I'm not worried about it. But at the same time, you know what it's doing? It gives us something to debate about. It gives us something to talk about. It gets fans engaged. It gets people engaged. You know and you know, all it does is just give people a reason to complain. It's, it, just, it, it's it, like it, politics and taxes. All you're going to do is you complain. To do. That's giving you something to do. But it gives and us people a job. Like to do. It gives us a job. It gives me <laughs> my... Well, I don't get paid for this. I'm but. not worried about it. At the end of the day, Mississippi State will not make it because they're going to lose at Ole Miss. Well, I, I agree. I think that the top four right now, I know it's weird to say I actually agree with you guys, but the top four as of this moment is correct. The top four teams, they've got it right right now. I think ultimately Oregon is going to be a team that will be able to possibly move up to a number one team. I really like Marietta as a quarterback. Got a lot of offensive no power. That team has so much offensive power. They I think, are in Alabama. And I think Baylor is going to have a shot to move into it. And I think it depends on if Mississippi State is going to be able to beat Ole Miss. And if that happens, then Ole Miss will have a chance to step up. But I think as of right now, these teams are the right four teams. I mean, Florida State's the one team that you look at and say they haven't really played anyone. They have the 11th best passing attack in the league right now, but they haven't really played that one marquee here's, team here's to really the, get anything. Here's the Florida so you can, State. So you can argue with that. If they lose, that's going to hurt them big. I know they literally haven't played a ranked team that like Alabama or the SEC or even the Big 12 teams have played, but Florida State has to do something that no other team has to face. They have to face the burden of being the defending national champions. And sure. every single team you play wants to be the guys that beat the champions. That's, it's always in sport. When you play the team against the champion, you always play better. So Florida State has played the absolute best of any of these teams they've played. They've played the A-plus version of every team, and they've come through and all that, but they've handled so much adversity. There's going to be a documentary about Florida State because all these guys have off-the-field issues. I'm not going to say Everyone that. Everyone or just Jameis Winston? I'm, all of them. I mean, all there's, of them. there's players that are 
you know, leaving scenes of accidents, or guys, you know, beating up their girlfriends. There's guys getting in car wrecks, and so you know, you're a thirty being for thirty with this. I'm saying <laughs> it, th there, there can be a thirty for thirty on it. About Bill Simmons is smiling somewhere right now. Literally, yeah, you know, because he watches up. this. At the end of the day, well, yeah. yes, <laughs> the the there's going to be a thirty for thirty about Florida State, and it's just going to be about how all these guys had all these off-field issues, but somehow Jimbo Fisher could just it's a great name throw them together. It's a great name. And when in sports have you ever punished a team for winning? I mean, why would you punish Florida State for winning a football they game? They punished TCU. TCU won against Kansas, went, and Kansas got punished. You went they to the punished. wire with a really pathetic team. But they got team. punished. They got punished for it's winning. It's a double-edged sword there. It's a double-edged sword. <laughs> Florida State has actually played at least quality competition, whereas You're Kansas, Kansas, Dude, get Kansas off. is a great competition. All right, I'm going to stop you guys right there. Shane, you got the first word in and the last word, and we're going to give you the point for this question. So that what? puts Blake <laughs> one, then zero. Shane. Ooh. Oh, so this is the game number one. Oh. I started the belt. Spark a little heat There's between no these belt. guys. I made the belt. I made everything with this show. I made the belt. That's contrary to belief. I did oh. a lot with the set, I would like to say. All right. All right. Moving on to question number three. A winless Raiders team finally beat, or finally got its first win last night, beating the Chiefs. At 7-4, and four, the Chiefs join Miami, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cleveland, Indianapolis, and San Diego for s four losses. Um, so now the playoff bid is virtually up for grabs with all of these teams. I want to know who goes to the playoff and wins the AFC. The whole AFC? Yes. Like goes whole to the, Super AFC. the whole AFC. Everyone gets it. Uh, about the, I mean, about the Chiefs' loss. That was the like ultimate trap game ever. Like raining, just you just beat, you just you literally just beat the Super Bowl champs. It's raining in Oakland, which is a terrible place to go for Chiefs fans, especially. And then you have Denver at home the next weekend. Ultimate trap game. So I'm not worried about them. The Chiefs. Chiefs are gonna make it as a, make it as a wild card team this nope. year. And the next team that's gonna make it is gonna be the Pittsburgh Steelers. And unfortunately, that would mean that the Chiefs and the Colts would play in the first round of the playoffs again. And we all know what happens when the Chiefs and the Colts play in the playoffs. Clearly, they're gonna lose that game. I picked the Patriots to come out of the AFC because they are the most complete team. And they also have the best quarterback in the league, which odds are when you have the best quarterback. Best quarterback in the league. Peyton Manning's not that good this year. Tom Brady, it's, it's He's still leading statistically, I believe, in passing they, and touchdowns. They, they, kind of, they, kind of, they kind of go off and on each year. Also, he has way better receivers. Can you name anybody other than Julian Edelman and Ron Gronkowski? How, Gar how, how good were the receivers on Denver when he first came there? They, the, they were guys. Well, I mean, like, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow was there. They he's had a tall guy, but they, they really only warm. added one guy to their receiving core, and they've lost one guy as well. Yeah. They added Emmanuel Sanders, who they stole. They added Wes they Welker, the who Chiefs. used to be Tom Which is Brady's an wide receiver. Wes they, a Wes Welker who doesn't do anything. But he used he, to like, be he Tom. He doesn't play That games. used to be Tom Brady's. Then that makes Brady even better now, because he doesn't have Welker if you're saying Welker's good. But he's old now, Just is what talk. I'm saying. Much, he's old. Oh, you want me to talk <laughs> the now. The Patriots are going to make it out of the AFC. All right, well, I will agree with you on that point. I think the Patriots right now are the best two. I think they're the best team, along with Denver being B+, plus maybe, for the second best team in the league right now. AFC, though? It's just it's such a weird whole mess of a conference right now. What I've got right now is I've got the locks being for the win for the locks for the divisions being New England, Denver, and I think Indianapolis. I think those are all going to be safe locks. Now I, I'm a little bit different, I think, with who's going to be the wild cards. I don't think the Chiefs are going to win. I think the Chiefs get one more win. I think they beat Oakland, and I cannot see them be winning against any of these other teams. San Diego playing. at home. They are going to. I think San Diego is up on the uprise right now. I don't have San Diego getting in right now. I have Houston. I have Houston going on the upswing right now. They play Jacksonville twice, and they still have the Tennessee Titans, which is going to make them at least eight wins. If they can pull off one win, they're going to have nine wins. And I believe with the tiebreaker, it would go to the Texans over the Chiefs. With the, well, the Chiefs would have to win two games. They would have to win two games, nine. and I don't think they're, they're, they're going to win two they're games. They're going to win three they're games. They're not going to win ten. three games. They're going to beat the Cardinals? They're, they, you think they're going to beat the Cardinals as well? They're going to beat Denver at home, San Diego, Oakland. So, three. Anyway, I have, but I and think they can beat the Steelers too. I mean, they have the to Steelers are going. Steelers are going to win the division. As much as I hate to say that, I don't think the Ravens are going to win. The Ravens right now are way too inconsistent for me. Ravens they got are an easy the schedule division. the rest of the way. They got they got a favorable they, five game matchup. They lose to the Browns. Okay, then, the do Browns. we get to the question? They lose I to mean, the Browns. Oh, I'm answering the question. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I have the Bengals winning the other wild card spot as well. So I have Bengals and Houston. Okay. Bengals have the okay. six three one wins right okay. now. Completely throws right. everything off. Those are your teams. I already, I already did, because I, I answered that one first, because I like to go out of order to mess with my <laughs> mind again. New England, remember? Said New England. I think the final spot for the players. AFC wild card is going to come down to three teams. I think it's going to be San Diego, Kansas City, and I think it's going to be Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh has the best schedule of the three teams, in my opinion. San Diego has, and Pittsburgh, and Kansas City plays both those teams at the end. So they do have a chance to really make play their way into well, the any playoffs. Any of these teams do. Any of these teams do. But I do agree with you. I don't think the Chiefs are going to make the playoffs. They, yeah. Really, they are Five horrible at one of the more, most important positions. I think... You know, receiving-wise, they have zero touchdowns from the receivers, and I think that's going to hurt them. Teams can pass. Kansas City Chiefs can't. That's they what can takes pass. them win in the playoffs. 
Alex Smith, who is the, your drop back, oh, I don't feel like throwing the ball, I'll hand it off to a running back. That is literally his Alex entire Smith, move. Is, Alex, uh, oh, here we go. Alex oh, Smith, they're going to figure it out at some point. He's made plenty of passing plays. The only problem, here's that How stat, many yards did he have last night? I, I have no idea. Probably he had like 200 yards. <laughs> 200 yards. Still, that's Michael not, Cummings throws for more yards than he does right well, now. Well, Michael Cummings, is a, he's a legend in the making. <laughs> he is a legend <laughs> Anyhow, in the Anyhow, what I was going to say is that the reason the Chiefs don't have any receiving touchdowns is because their offense isn't explosive from passing. But here's That's here's, why it's predictable. Here's why this offense gets, why that stat doesn't matter. Because what happens, when the Chiefs get inside the inside the tent, 10 and in, which most teams nowadays pass, the Chiefs have the best running back in the game. He's just going to run it in. But don't you think teams are so, going to catch on to that with superior it, defenses? It, it hasn't, nobody's stopping yet. Or they're going yeah, to throw it to Travis Kelsey. Who are they playing though right now? They, they even they lost to Tennessee. They lost to Tennessee. They're, they're, they're three losses here at, 40, at the 49ers, home against Tennessee, at Oakland. But they've, and sorry, they've lost to Denver too. That's their fourth loss. But you go back to it. Think about it. They beat the Patriots. They beat the Chargers. Before they the beat, they beat, they beat the Chargers in San Diego. That was they okay. I'll get that. Super Bowl champions in Arrowhead. I'm, yeah, they, in Arrowhead. This so, team, that team can't play on the road anymore. They can play on the road. At the end of the day, when the Chiefs do not, at the end of the day, when the Chiefs do not make the playoffs, they can point to two games: Tennessee Titans and the Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. it, because they lost both of those games, they won't make the playoffs. Yeah, dude, the Royals weren't supposed to make the playoffs either. <laughs> All right, should guys. Still be fired. We got a little bit off track there. I'm not exactly sure where that ended up, but to give it to the person who answered both questions very excitedly, Ben Allen gets the point. So we are tied one to one to one. Coming into our fourth question. Oh. All right, boys, let's go. After struggling against UC Santa Barbara's zone and then seeing an embarrassing blowout against Kentucky, should Jayhawk fans lower their expectations for this season? No. Stop. All, no all expectations. The, I, most, one of the most frustrating things as a sports fan in the world are KU basketball fans. And here's why. There's so many of them that are ridiculous, that are just ridiculous. And you're like, well, if we don't win the national championship, we should fire Bill Self. Here's the deal. <laughs> this team is so inexperienced. And I, they're just That's why so you should lower expectations. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, they have the best, they have one of the three best coaches in college basketball who's done it before, who's done it with less. Mind you, 05, 06, you had Mario Trump. You had a starting lineup of almost all freshmen. That team won the Big 12, won the Big 12 tournament, made it as a four seed. This team has so much more talent and experience than that team did. At the, the Big 12 day, and college basketball is better. That team won, that, uh, that core of that team went on to win a national championship, Shane. So I'm kind of sorry. I mean, they're also known as one of the best national, the best teams to win a national championship. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of sorry. But about from that, that. year, but your, point, your point doesn't make any point. They all got better. That year was really good. That okay. year you had Lamarcus Aldridge in the NCAA. Sorry. At the end of the day, here's the deal. Kansas is very talented. They have a coach who can develop things. Kentucky is the second tallest team in the NBA. I don't care about Kentucky. They could run the table. I'm, I'm fine with that. That loss. 30 points, yeah, it was embarrassing, but this is a team that has no idea how to run an offense or play a defense right now. Right now. Right now. Yes. Here's the deal. It's November 21st. I'll worry about our offense and defense by January. That's, that's my hard deadline on when K should be better. At the end of the day, they have the best coach. They have talent out the wazoo, and they have a team. They have, and core group guys have been there before, and there's just a culture at Kansas that you have to get better. They have to get better. Monday when they play Ryder, it's not going to be pretty. I'll go ahead and say right now, it won't be a pretty win. But I guarantee you, when Ben and I have our nice little show next semester, we're going to be talking about a nationally ranked team competing for the Big 12 and competing for a one or two seed. End of the story. I like to over dramatize things, obviously, but uh, no, I agree. I think the team should they should lower the expectations, not by a lot, but I think they should lower the expectations. Four was way too high for this team to be ranked at the beginning of the season. That's why I think preseason ranked. I think that's why people need to drop the expectations. Preseason rankings are potentially Kansas no, that's very potentially true. be the, fe the fifth best team in the country. But this team right now, I mean, obviously that game was one of the most atrocious games we've ever seen. But this team's not going to shoot 19 percent ever again. This team, yeah, and I know, and they're going to be they're 346, I think, right now in the you know all of college basketball shooting percentage. We know that's going to go up. But the team only got seven assists, and that's the most worrisome thing. For that me. happens when you don't run the an offense. And that was my issue: is I'm not sure if there's really going to be an offense run. I really do like Bill Self, they but have, I they do have, not. They, have, they, they did have, not run an offense last year throughout the entire year. There was I mean, no offensive had, plays. That, they team had, was, in, that team was a lot different last year. I mean, you it had, was a lot different. You but had, there's a, you lot, had a player who that didn't fit his offense this year. You have, that's you have players that fit the offense. But they also don't have they don't have an established point guard position yet, and that's a big issue. If Frank Mason's going to be the starting point guard, depending on how long Bill wants to run. Frank Mason needs to realize that he's like you. He's not six eight. Yeah, he's not. He's not six eight. He's probably closer to five six. He, play, he plays like Ben Allen thinks how like Frank Mason thinks he's like six eight. You guys should really be really good friends because we actually are actually really good friends. We're both from he's from the Virginia area and I lived in Virginia for a bit. We hang out with Trey Songs a lot. Oh, okay. Um, cool. But but my point I was trying to get at before you just nicely cut me off 
was ultimately that this team, they need, as fans, we need to lower expectations a little bit. Realize this isn't going to be, you know, the best team we've probably ever seen for KU, but they have potential to be very good if they build things up the right way. But as for right now, expectations, they need to be lowered. I don't think they need to lower their expectations because I think the expectations should have been low to begin with. I don't think they should have been as hyped as you just mentioned. As It is potential. I think I don't doubt Bill Self. I think this team is going to be really good by the end of the year. But at the same time, I think this Big 12 is a lot better than it is, was last year. And it was really good last year. So this year it's going to be really tough, I think, to win that 11th conference championship in a row. I think college basketball in general is really good, as you saw with Kentucky, Duke, and Michigan State teams the other night. They're Duke all really State, good. Both. That was a sloppy, sloppy game. Yeah. But they are all really good teams. You can tell that. If Kansas would have played Duke, it would have been a much closer game. If they played Michigan State, they'd probably win that game. Yeah. Kentucky is an anomaly this year. It's, every, it's Kentucky and everyone else. I would take Kentucky versus anyone in the field right now in a bet. And, here, and at the end of the day, you have to, you have to look at Kansas. Is that, and I just keep reading right this. He's done it before. Bill Self's done it with less. With less experience, with less talent, with a harder schedule. 2012, that team, far less talented. Far less, exp far less experience. I mean, Tyson Taylor was running a team for the first time in his life. Thomas Robinson was a star. He hadn't started the year before. They played the toughest schedule. Mind you, we think it's tough this year, going from Kentucky, and then you have Ryder, and then you go, you, go to the, you go to the Old Spice Classic. They went to Maui, and arguably the best Maui field they've ever had should have beaten Duke in Maui. Bill Self can turn it around. The offense will get run. They're going to play defense. My only question is that, is this going to be Bill Self's first team to run more of a triangle in two in games because they have the That's athletes. They, should do. they have the That's athletes for do. and they can't rebound. And if you play a triangle in two, I know zones, you don't actually rebound better, but it gives you the ability to stop the diagonal cuts. One thing to be optimist, optimistic about, this defense is a lot better than it was last year. Although you don't have a rim protector, I think, you know, I like the trap out there at the perimeter because I think you got athletes out there at the wings that can really create chaos and cause turnovers. Before we get into debate about plays and how Coach Self should coach his team, we're gonna keep things moving along here. We're gonna give the point to Blake because in Bill Self we trust. So that bit's oh, two, one. Suck up points. One. Suck, suck up it. points, maybe. You should probably try harder. <laughs> I'm the one picking over here. All right, oh, last man. question, guys. Wrap it up, go quick. The Sixers are freaking terrible if you haven't been watching. If the Sixers played Kentucky, who would win? Kentucky wins. Kentucky wins four out of seven. This is how bad this team is right now. They are arguably going to be one of the worst teams of all time. They're not as bad as the 2012 Bobcats, who had the lowest winning percentage of all time, which was, a, which was uh, nine was, wins. Yeah, it was nine wins. They had a 106 winning percentage, which is god awful. I just want to throw out a little fun fact here because I like to look up old fun facts here. 1948, there was a team. Uh, they were called the Steamrollers. They're from Providence. They uh, let's get the uh, official numbers here. They had six wins and 42 losses, only averaged 69 points per game, and shot 27% from the field. They're not that bad. They're not that bad. They're really bad, though. This team, they only have, let's see, let's get the exact numbers here because I want to be exactly honest here with everything. They only have one player on their active roster right now that has more than two years of experience. They only have five guys on the team that were taken in the first round and only three active right now. And they also only have eight players on the entire roster, active or non-active, that were actually drafted at all. You look at Kentucky right now, they have nine All-Americans and a ton of guys that obviously won't be, there won't be nine guys drafted from Kentucky this year, but they all have potential to be drafted in the first round. The potential on this team is so much higher than anything in the 76ers. So, hold are you into the question is like five years now, could the, the Sixers be no, Kentucky? No, no, you could, right, no, right now, no, that's what I'm saying. They have, right, the, now, they, right, now, right now, you could the put Sixers the win. Carlstown and everyone else could go out there and they would be able to the Sixers, beat the 76ers. The Sixers win, and I think this is, this is a very, um, it's a funny question, it's a very, like, Evergreen. It's abstract, but here's, but here's at the end of the day. The 76ers have a full roster of 15 guys who are good enough to play in the NBA. Kentucky has a full roster of 15 guys. You're arguing they're good enough to play in the and, NBA. They couldn't play of, anywhere else. And 10 of them are possibly good enough to play in the NBA. Possibly good enough. At the end of the day, the Sixers win. In professional teams, every single person on that team would have been the best player on their college team. But half those players would not be able to make an NBA roster any other team. There is no way Kentucky can beat the 76ers. Who's going to guard New Orleans Noel? Who's going to guard He Michael only Carter averages Williams? six points in the NBA. No, Kentucky can't match up with, in the NBA. Not Nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> he, could, he would not be able, Willie Cauley Stein would be able to go out there and they defend play together. Him better. They played together. They New played together. Way better than he New was Carter younger Stein. at the time. If you I went to high right school now, with Cauley Stein. I can tell you right now, he can't guard New Orleans Noel. Stein. I, I watched him play really bad high school basketball. Every day, the 76ers are getting beat up by NBA players. NBA players. Kentucky is just having going to have their way with just college players. A lot of these players won't be playing in the NBA. There's no way. There's men and there's boys. There's no way that Kentucky Think can be Think about this for a second, though. Half their team wasn't drafted. 
Half of still, this team will be drafted from Kentucky. But they're still going to have to be in the NBA. <laughs> they to be in the NBA on a team that could not possibly win a game this year. They are that bad. <laughs> they, you, you know what the Papa, Don, Papa John's deal is right now? I know if they get is. 90 points, you get 50% off your pizza. Not if they win, not if they lose. Or with, well, if they do lose, you get it. If they just get 90 points, right. you get I think 50% it's a, off right, pizza. Man, I'm just telling you, it's, it's professional. Let's go to the amateurs. Out. I think it's the same argument that you can make that I think Tyler Self can beat either one of us because he plays against KU basketball Tyler players no. every day. So the, NBA, the 76ers play NBA teams every single day. They're getting better and every single day. And they get whooped day. by professional teams every single day. And sure, Kentucky could go out and play any other NBA team and probably get whooped every single day. The 76ers are basically not even an NBA team right now. They are tanking this year as hard as they can. That is why they have undrafted guys from like a year ago already starting on their team. Where you have guys that are professional athletes that were top picks in the draft that aren't going to be even the second string guys for a lot of good teams. All right, I'm going to cut you off here. Here on 3 in the Key, we like to bring up debate and we like to fight with each other. That's the atmosphere of the show. So, with two points, we give it to our host, Ben Allen. <laughs> His one time on the debate, he gets the victory. He can now hold it over this everyone else. This is not rigged. This is yeah. life. Blake and Shane, this is life. thank you so much for coming on today and for debating with us. Ben, congratulations. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. Thank you so it's much for joining us on 3 in the Key this week. Next week is Thanksgiving, so we won't be here, but we will be back with one more show for this semester, two Fridays from now. Thank you so much. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone.